Hello Wealth Lab 8 users, Glitch here. Today we'll talk about what's new in Wealth Lab 8 Build 62. This is a major new update with a couple of very intriguing new features. Uh, but let's start with a minor feature first of all. Let's create a new data set. And let's say we want to bring in some of our ASCII data for back testing. So we'll click the ASCII selection and press next here we're presented with a dialog where we need to establish the format of the ascii data so we'll go through all the trouble of setting up the format and if we need to do this again in the future we have to set the format up all over again well now we have these new saved formats so once you set the format you can save it using this button give it a name and then that name will appear in the drop down. So you can just click here to repopulate your common ASCII data formats. So there we go saved formats in ASCII files. For the next feature, let's open up a building block strategy and compose a simple strategy with our building blocks. So we're going to buy the next bar at market and let's say indicator compare to value. And we will say we want the RSI short period RSI four is less than 30. And let's say we'll have another condition, another short term oscillator, the CMO four is less than we'll say negative. 70. And let's run this on SPY, see if we get any signals. Okay, so we did get some signals. Let's go to positions and examine one of them here. So here we go. So we've got uh, situations where the RSI is less than 30 and the CMO is less than 70, negative 75 on the signal bar. So it went ahead and, and bought here. Uh, likewise, the same thing happened here. So we have a couple of entries. Both of those conditions were true. So the enhancement now is we can now say we want this block to evaluate to true if either of these conditions is true, not both of them. So right now these are anded together, but we reintroduced the OR divider. You'd be familiar with this if you have a version six and prior of Wealth Lab. So we brought it back now finally for WealthLab 8. So you can drag the OR divider over here, which creates basically two groups of conditions for this entry. And each one of these groups can have any number of conditions. So you know, I could have three conditions above the OR and two conditions below. So then what would happen is it would evaluate to true if all three of these were true or all two of these were true. So let's uh, run this again with the OR divider in place. So we've got uh, more signals at this point. Let's take a look here. So uh, let's try to find one where, okay, so on this bar, the CMO four was less than negative 75, but the RSI four was not below 30 yet it did signal the trade. So uh, we can open this up in a C-sharp coded strategy using this button to kind of take a look at how the building block generator creates some new Boolean variables for the OR group. And finally, at the, the very end, it says if the first OR group or the second OR group resolves to true, then we are go going ahead and place that order. So that's the OR divider, a nice new addition for WealthLab 8, just makes our building blocks that much more flexible. So next, we are going to take a look at, a, at the block that previously you had to use if you wanted to have any kind of OR conditions in your strategy, and that is the multi-condition group. So here I can drag a multi-condition group here, and uh, I can once ahead go ahead and drag two conditions, indicator compared to value, indicator compared to value. I could change these to 
RSI and CMO and, you know, let's pretend that I assigned these all the same parameters as before. So this is effectively the same as using the OR divider uh, because this multi-condition will resolve to true if one of these two conditions is true. So even though that's effectively the same, you can see the benefit of having the OR divider. Uh, and that's because you can really get a lot more flexibility instead of having to rely on these multi-condition groups, which were a bit limiting in some situations, trying to model specific Boolean setups for your strategies. Uh, but the one thing that we did enhance here in Build 62 is you can now drag another multi-condition group into a pre-existing multi-condition group. So you can you know, really, you know, kind of get crazy here with the uh, nesting of these groups. So, so the way this would resolve would be that this multi-condition is composed of three conditions, basically, number one, number two, and number three, where number three is itself a multi-condition, which resolves to either, uh, if either one of these two resolve to true, then this multi-condition would resolve to true. So nested, multi-condition groups just adds that much more flexibility to our building block strategies. And last but not least, we are going to create a new rotation strategy. And you'll see a big change in the interface here. So just like before, we could set up a weight indicator value. So we'll just stick with the default RSI 20, and we will keep the three stocks that have the lowest RSI value. And we will run it on, let's say, the NASDAQ 100. My favorite data set. And let's go ahead and click Run Back Test. So it's loading the data. It is running the back test. And there is the result. So we got a good profitable equity curve. So what's new here in the rotation strategy? Well, after much uh, requesting and demand from the community, you can now add additional conditions to a rotation strategy. So instead of just saying, take the three stocks that have the lowest RSI, I'm gonna impose some new conditions on here. I'm gonna say, you could drag condition blocks right into the rotation strategy. So I'm gonna say indicator, compared to value. So in addition to having the lowest RSI among the, the group, the stock must also have a low short-term CMO. CMO4 must be less than negative 75. So let's go ahead and rerun that with our eyes on the equity curve here. So you could see it did change the result and we now actually have some areas of light green, which means the strategy is in cash in those areas. So normally with the rotation strategy, you would see it fully invested, but now since we added the condition uh, of making sure that the, the stocks must also have a oversold CMO, we can see areas where we are not invested at all. So quite interesting. So what happens if we change this to say greater than? So we're only gonna take the stocks that have greater than, and we'll say 75. So we, we're gonna only try to get overbought short-term stocks in here. So you can see that that drastically altered the result. So this uh, kind of proves the old adage of buy low, sell high, I think. So instead of buying the stocks that are overbought, we're, we want to go back to buying the stocks that are oversold. We're going to say less than negative 75 and run that again and just compare the results so much better. So there we go. We have conditions now in the rotation strategy. And yet, of course, you can drag an OR divider in here and use all of the same kind of things that you can do in a building block strategy. So that's it, folks. Thanks for watching a major upgrade Build 62. We will see you all on the forum and see you next time.